water hole where we camp for several months to get specimens and photographs of the animals. Animals of every sort came down to drink. Hangoni, Impala, gazelles and others. A water hole seems to be under a perpetual flag of truth. And the lion and lamb literally lie down together. From our blinds we watched the arrival of monkeys, mostly baboons, as well as giraffes, which seem to consort in friendly fashion with the apes. An animal convention. Delegates arriving. Apparently, the big ape was chairman. Dissenting members walking out. lobbyists discussing the questions of the day. the baby giraffe how to drink. Soon a loud trumpeting told us the elephant had caught our scent. Convention was in disorder. encountered a nomadic tribe, wandering natives with their earthly belongings strapped to the beasts of burden. As inquiries told us we were nearing the Ngagi country, we noticed our boys becoming uneasy. Several had deserted, and we began to suspect the reason. Again those aerial scavengers telling of the presence of death. Another scavenger, the despised hyena. The abandoned village, the scene of desolation. A few shots after him as he scurried across the plain. A 
Another grave robber, the armadillo, who feasts upon the dead. Altogether, it was a merry little spot we picked to stop at. If there was a spot on earth that God forgot, this was it. In the phantom village, we again encountered elephant spore, determined to go after the big tusker. Meanwhile, Captain Swain came across an animal of such queer character that no one could give a name to it. It seemed like a cross between an armadillo and a tortoise, so Swain called it a tortadillo. So far as we have been able to learn, it is a species hitherto unknown to science. We handled the creature with interest until it happened to snap at a dog. In about three minutes, the dog was dead. After that, we gave the venomous devil a wide berth. Another tribe of nomads. And more elephant tracks. We came upon a herd of the great brutes, taking a bath in the lake. The big bull was the finest specimen we had so far run across, and we were anxious to get him. The herd limbered through the forest, tearing up trees and amusing themselves generally. They got our scent, and the big tusker plowed away through the tall grass, like a vast iron clad of the plains. Two shots with the elephant gun proved ineffective. Finally, a vital shot And the big fellow came down with a crash that made the earthquake. His tusk weighed 134 pounds each. The swift current cost us three of our mules. But it's an ill wind that don't blow somebody good. Wayne's radio set went with one of the mules. A roaring sound now told us that we were at the great Thompson Falls, an impressive and beautiful sight. In this village, we heard two interesting pieces of information. One, that there was a tribe of pygmies near at hand. The other regarding the gorillas, Ingagi they call them. We were soon to come upon our most amazing adventure. All but 18 of our boys had now deserted. Cutting our way through the dense underbrush, we were conscious of being watched by hundreds of invisible eyes. We caught a glimpse of the little fellows, wild as March hares. They lived on grubs and were digging them inside the bark of dead trees. One of the party tried to tempt them into the open but they were as shy as a bevy of debutantes. They were rather interested in the beads, however. And it proved a tempting bait, as we got a few camera shots of the little beggars. Then they were off like the wind, and we never caught another glimpse of them. 
Months of weary trekking brought us near the mysterious region beyond the Kaibu country of the Belgian Congo.